Have you noticed that the weather is becoming more unpredictable and more severe? Some scientists even warn that we're headed for a new ice age in about a decade. Are they right? Well, we'll take a look at that. We'll look at the data and we'll get to the bottom of it. And we'll also look at what that means for you and your loved ones. So stay tuned. Hello, I'm Lou Del Monte, the host of Savvy Life Strategies. We publish a new video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I invite you to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get more videos just like this. Now, before we talk about a potential ice age, let me tell you a little bit about my credentials so you can trust the information that we're going to talk about. By background, I'm a physicist, and I worked in the field of integrated circuits for over 30 years on developing some of the Department of Defense's most high-tech weapons. In addition, I'm an author, and I've written four science books, and I have a fifth one coming out in November of this year. Now, a number of my books are published in, in other languages and in other countries because they're popular and because I write in a way such that the average person can actually understand and enjoy science. And that's what I'm going to try to do in this video. I'm going to do my best to make it simple to understand if we're headed for a new ice age and what the data says and whether we should be really concerned and what we should do about it. The first piece of scientific data I'd like to call your attention to was published in 2015 by Professor Sokova. And basically what they did is they studied the cycles of the sun and correlated them with the magnetic fields of the sun. And they used that model to predict how the sun would react in the future. And it turned out that their model was actually very accurate. They could predict with about a 97% probability what the sun was going to do in the future. Based on that, what they did is they predicted when would this, what would the sun look like in about a decade. So they noticed that the sun was actually getting dimmer, less light was reaching the earth. So the activity of the sun was diminishing and they say by 2030 it will diminish to about 60% of what it is now. Now, I'll put a link to that down in the description, but you're probably asking, that sounds really hard to believe. How could we be headed for a new, a new ice age? Well, it turns out that it happened, uh, a mini ice age happened about 300 years ago. It started in 1645 and it lasted to 1715. So we know it's possible for the sun to diminish the amount of light that it's sending to the earth and cause the Earth to go into a mini ice age. Now you may ask, what are the implications of a mini ice age? Well, they're pretty tough. It means freezing weather, diminished crops and food production, and a real high demand on energy in order to keep us warm. Now, let me be clear. This has nothing to do with global warming, which is a different phenomena. What happened 300 years ago wasn't due to global warming. It was due to the sun's natural cycle, where it goes through periods of sending more light to the earth and then less light to the earth. That's just how the sun behaves. Now, you may ask, what about global warming? Is that still a problem? Yes, it's a problem, and I think it's real. And I'm going to present some scientific data that indicates what global warming is and how how it behaves and why we should be concerned about it. But the main point here, why I'm bringing it in at this point is that if global warming continues and it looks like it's going to continue and we get a diminished amount of light from the sun in about the 2030 time frame, then we're going to face more, perhaps more than a mini ice age. It might be a full blown ice age. So we need to understand the whole aspects of global warming and how it might impact the mini ice age. 
Now, I know that there's been a lot of politics around global warming and people arguing, well, it's not real. Uh, it's just a, a political item. And basically, as a physicist, I can tell you that it is real and that if you look at 2,000 published papers, roughly 2,000 published papers on it, 97% of the scientists are saying that global warming is real and that it's man-made and it's related to our burning of fossil fuels. Now what's that? That's coal, oil, gasoline, etc. So those fossil fuels create carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas, and that carbon dioxide goes into the atmosphere and it traps the heat in. It lets the light through, but it doesn't let the heat out, so the earth is getting slightly hotter. Well, you may say, well, so what? The Earth's getting slightly warmer. That's probably okay. Well, how warm is it getting? Well, according to NASA, so far in about the last century, it's gone up 1.4 degrees. That's NASA's data. Now, you might say, well, 1.4 degrees, that's not a really big deal. Well, it turns out that it is. 1.4 degrees is causing glaciers to melt especially off of Greenland and, and the Arctic. And as they melt, they add fresh water to the oceans. And what that's doing is the glaciers are increasing the volume of the ocean. So the ocean's rising from that effect. And in addition, when you add light and heat into the ocean, you expand the water, so to speak. It's thermal expansion. So from that, from those two effects, the ocean has risen about eight inches in, a la in the last hundred years. If it continues, with, by the end of the century, the coastline won't be recognizable. Parts of Florida will be submerged, parts of the uh, uh, west coast in California will be submerged. And you might say, well, I'm okay. I live in the middle of the United States. For example, I live in Minnesota. Well, you're not okay, because what's causing that is CO2, carbon dioxide. And right now, if you look at the carbon dioxide level of the, of the air, of the atmosphere, it's 400 parts per million. That's twice as high as it's ever been, and it continues to increase. As it goes up, as it approaches 500 parts per million, it actually becomes a danger to human life. So far, the World Health Organization attributes 3 million deaths per year just due to the increase in air pollution. That air pollution being the burning of fossil fuels. By 2050, the World Health Organization expects the number to increase to over 6 million. So we're looking at 6 million people dying a year from air pollution caused by burning fossil fuels. In addition, as the temperature goes up, many species can't adapt as well as humans can. We can, we can use air conditioning and we can use other methods to, to stay cool. However, many species can't do that. They're very sensitive to temperature. What does that mean? It means that about one-fourth of the Earth's species will be extinct by 2050. And those same experts are saying that by the end of the century, if we don't do something to stop global warming, the extinction could include humanity itself. Just recently, a new paper came out, and this is what pretty much got me to do this video. The paper was published on April 11th, so we're talking only a few days ago. And it had to do with the Atlantic Ocean Current, and scientists, I'll put a link to the paper down below and you can read it uh, for yourself. I'll put several links, some are in layman terms, and I'll put one link that's actually uh, from the magazine, the journal Nature. Now, what the scientists are saying is that the Atlantic current is slowing down. And they're, they're attributing that in large part to the fact that icebergs are melting and we're getting fresh water mixed in with the, with the uh, salt water and that's changing the whole ecology. Now if you saw that popular film back in 2004, The Day After Tomorrow, that was the whole premise of the film, that we changed the current in the ocean, the Atlantic current, 
in the ocean such that it no longer was operating. It stopped altogether. And when that occurred, we went into a ice age. So there's another factor that we need to be concerned about. You may ask, is this real? Or is it, is it something being made up? Should I be worried about it? Well, it's real. We know from past studies, scientific studies, we know that the, the Atlantic current can be halted. Now I'm going to put up a, a quick visual here and you can look for yourself how the Atlantic current works. But basically what it's doing is it's exchanging the hot and cold water, the hot water from the uh, equator with the cold water from the Arctic and they're intermixing. And that regulates the climate on the Earth. If that slows down significantly or stops, and it has stopped in the past, there is evidence that uh, during the Ice Age it stopped. If that stops, then we get very severe weather. There's no regulation. So we're looking at some very serious uh, consequences. Of course, now, the question is, will it stop? Well, we don't know that for sure. Scientists are saying, look, it's heading in such a way, it's, it's going forward in such a way that we actually may be reaching a tipping point, but they can't predict exactly when that tipping point will occur. But when it occurs, the, the phenomena of a tipping point is that everything happens very quickly. Once it reaches that tipping point, then it's a point of no return and it's a, sort of an escalating effect and everything happens quickly and we won't have time to react. Now, I know all this is concerning and I don't want to be an alarmist. I want to actually give you the facts. In a nutshell, what are the facts? The facts are that the sun's intensity to the earth is decreasing. And that activity has happened in the past and it appears to be happening again. Now, scientists believe that they're correct in predicting this because they've correlated the, earth, the sun's magnetic fields to changes in the intensity of the sun to the earth. And their predictive model is about 97% on, on target. Using this, they're predicting that we will see a mini ice age just from the sun diminishing by 2030. Another fact is that there's greenhouse gas emissions and there's no denying that. You know, we can pass policies and we can have political arguments and what have you, but the science is the science and the fundamental is that carbon dioxide is increasing. It's been measured by NASA so we're not talking about some lab out in nowhere. We're talking about NASA has measured it. And what they're saying is it's about double what it was a century ago. It's up to about 400 parts per million. At 500 parts per million, it's a danger to us. And that raises an important question. Will we survive if it gets that high? Now, you may ask, will it be as bad as the day after tomorrow film? Well, most scientists think it won't be. It won't be quite that bad. But we need to prepare for it. It's not the kind of thing you can say, well, we'll wait till it happens and then we'll start preparing. If it occurs, we need to be prepared when it occurs and before it occurs. Well, now you're saying prepare for this. How do you prepare for the sun diminishing and that we're only going to get 60% of the light by 2030? Well, let me say this, that if we know that, we can stockpile food and fuel. Those are going to be critical. Stockpiling food and fuel. What do we need to do? We need to have the world governments agree that the data is sound, at least deserves scrutiny and some preparation. In addition, we need world governments to agree that global warming is real and we need to take a different course on that as well. The two together, you have two things going on. On the one hand, you have global warming, and that, as I said, is, I believe, a real phenomena, and it's man-made and caused by burning fossil fuels, and it's, and it's getting worse. And on the other hand, you have the natural sun's activity changing in, a, in its cycle and diminishing. And when those two combine and come together, what you could have is a very difficult situation for the Earth where we actually enter into a new ice age. My message is actually a simple one. I'm not saying that we can avoid all natural disasters. However, there are things we can do to prepare. 
And that's what I'm advocating here, is that we prepare and we take the data seriously. Well, I'm going to end it here and give you an opportunity to read the links below and formulate your own opinions. Uh, that's it for this technology segment. If you found this video informative, I invite you to subscribe for more videos just like this. In addition, hit the thumbs up, give it a thumbs up that you like it. That tells other people that this is a valuable video and it's one that they should watch. And there's a small bell icon. Click that bell icon and that way you'll be sure to get more videos just like this as they're published. And as I said, we publish a new video. We post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until we have a chance to talk again, stay savvy and live well.